Thank you for this invitation and this opportunity. Uh, I am joined by my colleague Gayatri Girish, uh, and uh, I am conscious of the fact that uh, Pranav will be uh, taking over the session, and he will be also adding his insights on uh, uh, the ethical dimension to digital media research. So very quickly, I will uh, dwell on this uh, area and uh, share some of uh, uh, my own thoughts here. But because this is an online session and a unique session, what I've done is I've uh, tried to pose some questions for all of you to answer. I hope that's okay. I hope I'll have some participation from your side. Uh, so with that uh, implied uh, assurance from you, I would request that we go to the next slide. And uh, yeah, can you... Uh, yeah, I have a question on the slide. If some of you can use the chat box to answer this, I would be happy. Your participation is eagerly looked forward to by me and Gayatri. I have a question on the slide. Can anyone attempt to answer this? Ashwini Ramesh has started the answering. Okay, Ashwini, fine. That is that the only participation that I'm going to expect? Okay. Ritu Ravindran. Okay. Two responses from the entire audience of 36. Minus me and Gayatri, 34. Minus Pranav, Anto, and the coordinator, 32. Okay. Um, friends, you know, the aspect of not in all cases, that's fine. Okay. So I'm just moving forward because I have a lot of things to uh, interact and ask you. So let me just uh, not stop at the first question itself. So I believe, friends, that uh, uh, ethics is very critical and important in any profession. Now, if you're talking about uh, media, uh, be it print media or be it digital media, how do we look at the dimension of ethics? Uh, is ethics important uh, in the first place? And if someone violates ethics, is there a penalty? Now, we all know that violation of law will definitely attract some kind of a penalty. But does violation of ethics attract penalty? No. No. Yeah. I think this is probably the general understanding that all of us have. And hence, you know, we all have a tendency not to be ethical in our life because there is no fear of penalty or punishment. So while we fear law, why we fear law is because we think there is going to be a penalty. There's going to be punishment. We don't fear ethics because we think there is no penalty, right? But are ethics relevant uh, in any profession? What makes a profession? Friends, I think a profession is made by several uh, aspects. And one of them is actually the ethical standards that are required in a given profession, right? Now, you may say, sir, can you tell me one or two examples of ethical standards? Now, let me ask you, is a sting operation legal in India? Can you undertake a sting operation? I suppose you are media students, you are journalist, uh, future journalist of India, you have interest in journalism, be it online or offline. So I want to ask you whether a sting operation is legal in India. Come on, I thought sting operation at least will uh, give me good responses. I'm sure you might have dealt about this. Ashwin, if you want to unmute, you can. Go ahead. Investigative journalism is probably trying to find the truth. It is trying to uh, protect larger public interest. It is trying to uh, bring about better accountability of public servant and government. So can, to what extent can you go with the sting operation to expose officers who are corrupt? To what extent can you do investigative journalism to expose uh, mis maladministration and government? Do we know where is the line to be drawn between what is legal and what is ethical, especially in a sting operation? So Ashwini, let's assume that, uh, you know, uh, there is an allegation against me, okay, uh, that I am, I commit sexual harassment at workplace. You don't have evidence regarding the same, right? Do you want to collect evidence and uh, you come up with a small camera uh, into my office uh, so that, you know, you can record what I speak, how I behave uh, and uh, that will actually pin my liability because how do you pin liability just by mere allegations, right? So you, Ashwini, you remember the Me Too movement, right, uh, to a larger extent and uh, where did the Me Too movement uh, go? Digitally, you know, we created a lot of ruckus with the Me Too movement. Uh, I hope you know the different celebrities who were... Uh, you know, uh, who faced allegation, including um, uh, Madhur Bhandarkar and uh, Raghu Dikshit as well, if I can recall it. Uh, all of them were actually, uh, you know, uh, unfortunately alleged to have uh, committed some form of harassment. And uh, the media actually blowed the, the proportion out. So I need some evidence. So can I undertake a small 
camera with me? Can I record this evidence? Is it ethical to do so? Because you are actually then exposing someone who is a wrongdoer. Well, uh, and now even I'm thinking maybe it's not ethical and uh, maybe it is legal but not ethical. So Ashwini, precisely the reason why I wanted to start the discussion of this, isn't it? Because see, it is interesting for us to understand that uh, there is always a need to bring the truth out. But Ashwini, to be honest, truth is not so very easy to bring out. Right. And uh, to be honest, I have spoken to a lot of investigators who say that, you know, see the only say to truth to bharni aega. Hame to ulti ungli to hi truth bharni kalna chahiye. Right. We have to use uh, different dimensions to actually bring out the truth. And this is precisely where the rule on legality and ethical dimension actually come into place. Right. Now, you know that we have something called the fundamental right to privacy. Now, if you go by privacy or confidentiality as a rule, it is important that every kind of journalism, be it uh, print or digital or any other form of journalism, must respect privacy. Only then journalism can be taken forward. Otherwise, you will be sued for breach of privacy. Right. So you must know that privacy today is a right. It's recognized in law. And hence, without infringing privacy, can you actually go about your business of either journalism or the larger public interest of putting something on the uh, digital media platform, right? So I believe that any kind of research uh, that we do uh, in uh, on digital media or in digital media, this aspect of trying to understand ethical dimension becomes very clear. It is very important, right? And I think uh, if you ask me, uh, what is ethics? Okay. Let me, uh, uh, you know, talk about one thing called, uh, something called the ethical treatment of animals. Okay. Do we know what is the ethical treatment of animals? Why don't we use the word legal treatment of animals? Why do we see only ethical treatment of animals? Cruelty. Okay. Excellent. Okay. So what is cruelty? You know, what is cruelty? You know, why we say we must treat animals ethically? See, the aspect is that, you know, we always say that what cannot be regulated by law sometimes has to be regulated by ethics. See, everything cannot be regulated by law. For every action and inaction, you can't have a law. Hence, sometimes you must have ethics to guide what is good and what is bad, what is right and what is wrong. And hence, friends, it is important that the society determines the same. Usually our ethical dimensions come from our family, from our house, from our parents, our elders, our culture, our society. It can come from our profession. It comes from the professionality in which you are. For example, we say doctors must have ethical standards. Right. So why? Because everything what the doctor does as a malpractice cannot be punished under law. Some have to be punished under ethics. Now, what is the punishment for a doctor if he does not undergo uh, or does not follow ethics? Please note, his license may be suspended of, uh, for a certain period of time. Okay, Maybe his licenses can be revoked as well. That's also possible. Maybe he can be removed from his service. Maybe he can be suspended from his service. So there is some sanction for ethics if the profession decides that this kind of a conduct is not acceptable. It is unethical. For example, how do we determine unethics, unethical practices in animals or treatment of animals? Please note, we have brought about ethical standards about how to slaughter animals. We have brought about ethical standards about how should you actually undertake uh, a pet. Right? So these are important because you know you can't punish someone who is beating the bullock cart uh, or trying to propel the bullock cart in a faster place and he is actually whipping the. Uh, cattle over there. You can't punish every action over there saying it's unethical. But sometimes it is necessary to educate people to be more sensitive, to respect others' rights. That's what ethics means, right? You actually respect others' rights before you respect yours. So I think it is important that we look at some of these aspects and it's critical. I don't know if some of you have seen the latest HM ad, H&M, H&M ad has Anyone seen the controversy of an H and M ad, which just came yesterday? Okay, no one is following the news. Okay, this is about digital media, so I thought you will all be interested in the ad by H and. No one knows about the H M N ad controversy yesterday. Oh God. 
Okay, friends, it's an interesting act. It's there on Google. Please refer to it. Two girls, young girls in school uniform, which is made by HMN, are standing and looking uh, towards the camera. And the statement of the ad is making those heads turn. This ad has now been brought down and HMM has apologized. Now, please note this ad people criticized and said that you are actually literally objectifying two young girls. Why should two young girls, uh, you know, they were probably less than six or seven years of age, uh, start turning your heads? Are you objectifying young girls? Rather, one comment said, you know, this is nothing but a pedophilic, uh, you know, kind of a thought. Yes. It was a comment that was made and HMM realized that mistake, though they had actually spread this ad on the digital media everywhere. It was actually a very popular one. They said, look, let's uh, immediately spread it across. But now they are apologized for it. And I agree that this is where the ethics of the scene comes into place. But more importantly, it's about the morality of the ad as well. So ethics, morality and law friends have an interesting dimension. Yes. Thank you for putting that in the chat box. Yes, that is sexualizing young girls. That is what the comment that was made on HMN, right? So I think, friends, while it talks about morality, because morality is about vulgarity, it is about obscenity, it is about, uh, you know, you know, trying to objectify a person. Uh, and that, I think, is a very critical dimension about how you go about uh, the practice of uh, putting advertisement on digital media. So I think all of these are very relevant because I believe, friends, when we do research uh, on digital media, I think we must know which content to accept and which content not to accept. Because when you read something, you must know that this is not a, a material that uh, is good and it's unethical for me to use it. Uh, this is immoral and this is illegal. And hence, I must probably access material that are uh, legal, ethical and moral. I hope uh, this point is very well taken. Now, my second question to all of you is ethics and morality are the same. Can I ask you one uh, interesting uh, question? I just wanted to. Uh, so if you were uh, in journalism and uh, you are covering an event and there is a ward, you know, uh, ward road malfunction of a celebrity, you know, what is ward road malfunctioning, right? I'm sure we all know. Will you report that and uh, put the picture and the images of that celebrity in that war road malfunction. Will you put it on your, on your, you know, wherever? Please answer this quickly. Okay. You won't put the image. Okay. I understand that. Will you report that war road malfunction? Will you report that war road malfunction? Friends, if you all say no, I assure you, you'll all be unemployed. Who, who is going to, you know, see, you know, you should report it, but probably you should know what to report and how to report it. Friends, to be honest, I think page three kind of journalism pays well. There's a lot of uh, people who want to, uh, you know, read it, find it out and see it. So friends, there is a distinction about what to report and what not to include in the report because that may be immoral, right? Now, you know, to be honest, this mad road, um, um, what road, sorry, what road malfunctioning. I was just trying to see how many people are interested to view this. Okay, just uh, uh, very recently, Janet Jackson's, uh, you know, issue, I just tried to search. You know, to be honest, it receives a lot of attention on digital. Of course, uh, you know, there were some very interesting queries about why this happens, who is to be blamed. There is a lot of discussion about the same and uh, whether sometimes it is done deliberately to attract a lot of controversy because, you know, today uh, some of these can be really uh, kind of orchestrated uh, so that, you know, there is an immediate attention to you on uh, media. So I think it's important that we understand uh, where the morality of reporting comes in. Right? It's critical and important uh, because you may have your own page you may have your own post and uh, what you must put on the same becomes an issue uh, uh, as well. Remember, posting any kind of obscene material is not only immoral, it's not only unethical, but please remember, it can be punishable by law. So you must remember that 
the laws in India do not permit you to uh, use any of these images and photographs. And uh, of course, you can't also have uh, you know comments that can actually uh, bring hatred uh, to any individual or society or to religious sentiments as well. So the law will definitely catch up with you. But however, you must know what is right and wrong in the same way. Let's go to the third question, please. <clears throat> can anyone look at this, please? Does digital media have uh, any ethical conduct? If so, what is the ethical conduct for digital media? No one wants to answer that. Okay, what is uh, media today? What is journalism today? See, the traditional form of journalism was uh, newspaper. The second form of journalism became television. Today, when you're talking of digital media, what is journalism? Can you be a single person reporting things on certain topics and posting it on your own website, on your own uh, social media account? Is that also journalism? Can you be an independent journalist, independent journalism? Is it possible? And will ethics apply? Yes, it's possible. It's possible, sir. It is always possible, Dr. Anurag, yeah. isn't it? So, you know, today independent journalism is catching up, right? And uh, of course, uh, we say that journalism uh, uh, of different kinds, of different natures, you can have subject matter journalism, you can have opinionated journalism, you can have reporting journalism. So many aspects of journalism have come into place today, right? So the fact remains, how do we enforce professional standards for individual, independent journalists? This, I think, is the next big challenge that we speak about, right? Because you become what I would call as sometimes social media influencers. So, you know, sometimes I feel that, you know, serious journalism and social media influencers, you know, sometimes get smudged, to be honest, right? So you are giving opinions on so many aspects. At the same time, you're reporting things. Uh, so I see on YouTube, there are a lot of uh, people who immediately on any controversial news make a video. The video is intended to be on educational purposes, but they actually conclude uh, with opinions as well. And they think that this will help, uh, help UPSC aspirants. This will help those who are writing competitive exams, so on and so forth. However, please note, they are also reporting an incident or an activity there, right? And they're influencing a particular community that subscribes. So I think ethics here becomes a very, very important point. And we have to, at some point of time, force these social influencers, which are now covered under the consumer protection law, to actually look at ethical dimensions or ethical standards, right? And it becomes relevant because there are so many people who are accessing digital media. Don't forget the fact that online, you cannot verify someone's age easily, right? Though only 18 and above have to sign to a YouTube, but you have so many younger generation who can actually uh, log in and uh, all this may actually then become a very important challenge forward. Let's go to the next point, please. Yeah, we'll skip this. I'll go just looking at uh, another 15 minutes that I have. Uh, so uh, we'll go to the next slide, please. Can we answer this uh, at least yes or no? The first two questions, you can put it together, no problem. Yeah, thank you. Now, this is coming to research friends. Is there something called cyber crime that can be committed by digital media? Both the questions are yes. Friends, please note, I'm sure Pranav will be speaking much more about it. I'll just, you know, just put one point here. See, friends, if you're using any kind of a media platform with the help of internet, you just have a website, you have any kind of platform, okay? Uh, you have your own uh, LinkedIn, uh, you have your X account and you are posting things because please note the aspect of digital media and uh, traditional media is digital media gives you the speed right, to report. Now the speed is the advantage and sometimes it can be the disadvantage. Can you tell me why it can be a disadvantage? Leading towards fake contents, misinformation, suddenness. Excellent. Inaccurate and unverified reporting. Right? Inaccurate not so very accurate or not verified yes fake news sometimes true but it cannot be entirely a fake news but you're not verified the exact details in the content because that's where you use the speed is so you may be actually liable to spread some rumors if it is sensitive uh, information right so i think it's critical and important to understand that the information technology law uh, does deal with cyber crimes in some form and hence the use of internet for media must be done very responsibly and don't forget this 
you may be liable not only for what you report, but what if anyone else uses your platform to report as well. And that is what we call as the intermediary guidelines. So if you are hosting a website or any kind of a platform on the internet, please be very sure that your liability is fixed in law. So whatever content is posted, any form, in any way, and if it is in violation of the general law of the land, you can be made responsible for the same. Right? And hence, please note, as someone who accesses this website, can you also be made responsible? For example, if I go to a website where there is obscene material, right? to be honest, I'm actually promoting the same. Right? Though it's not a definite first-hand crime, it is definitely unethical for me to access this kind of material. Okay. Now let's come to copied content on the social media. <clears throat> now, please note, friends, there is something called fair use. Do we know what fair use is? I assume that you guys don't know what is fair use. Educational purposes. Excellent. Excellent. And uh, is media educational? Reporting educational? So I had an interesting uh, client, friends, who came to my office. And uh, you know that there are so many, uh, you know, images freely available on the internet. So he made a poster. And uh, he was a journalist, so he was actually, uh, you know, making an event. And uh, when he was making this poster, obviously he wanted some images to make the poster interesting. And uh, this was used and his newspaper also uh, printed that poster of that kind of an event. Later on, it was found that this image was a copyrighted image. Now, do we know what happens when you use copyright images? on digital and print media, it becomes a copyright infringement. So online, do we know what to pick and what not to pick? What images you can use and what you cannot use, right? I think it's critical and important for us to understand that please note there is not only ethics here, there is law here because it can amount to copyright infringement. I'll just give you one instance or example. How many of you like watching uh, short reels of 30 seconds or 15 seconds? We all like it, right? The Insta reels and uh, the short videos on YouTube and so on and so forth. Now the question is, friends, if I'm making an Insta reel and it's a kind of a uh, you know use of some media, I'm doing say a legal literacy campaign, which my team does. We do short reels as legal literacy programs. Now. My colleague Gayatri Girish at one point of time said, sir, uh, it's nice to have the audio of what the law is and you're teaching about legal literacy. It is good. But why don't we have a background music to it? So I told Gayatri, uh, I think that's very good because background music will make it interesting. The music can stop when I speak and, uh, you know, so it can make the whole thing interesting. Now, can I pick up music in my Insta read? You know, None of you have experience of making Insta Reels, is it? Okay, you see these Reels at least, don't you? Of course, yeah. So, you know, the background music that is played in most of them, is that copyright content? Can I use it? Can I justify it as fair use? No. Yes. <laughs> the next answer will be, we don't know. Why we, did we invite you to speak? We need to modify it. Okay. Oh, so uh, Kusuma Lata, Sociology and Social Work. Uh, Kusuma Lata, you are giving me ideas now. You are saying you want to remix the song. <laughs> and uh, you can you think you can do a remix without the permission of the original producer or person who holds the copyright to that song? You can't. That's also copyright infringement. So friends, you know, fair use is always something that you can justify. To be honest, today, the fair use doctrine has been uh, defined by law. Okay. Uh, and Gayatri has uh, rightly uh, put that. Uh, she has justified what is fair use. Uh, she wanted to actually say this. Uh, Gatri, please. What's fair use? Yes, sir. Um, uh, is fair use is um, is like we, yeah, the name itself says fair. It's kind of permissible use, uh, which is not commercial. So any use which is copyrighted by an author or an owner, like he he is, for example, sir was talking about uh, <clears throat> background music. So it's it's called the BGM in uh, um, literary sense. It's called the BGM. And before it was only these uh, singers who used to get performers rights. Now the BGM uh, makers all who, who are called now are the um, composers. 
they also uh, come under the copyright so um, but uh, the fair use doctrine will not be applicable if you are using it for a commercial purpose if this music is being used uh, as a school dance somebody uses it in a school dance performance or a college festival where the where you use these songs so that is actually a fair use but if you use that as a reel for any commercial purposes or you you even put it in the youtube so they uh, it is not a permissible thing so uh, just to give that uh, example which can be used as you now you have these uh, um um like you have in many uh, programs they use these songs so that is a fair use but if you are using it for further commercial aspects then it is not considered to be a fair use interestingly the word fair use has now been defined to include research as well so if you are using any material for research it will come under the fair use doctrine so don't worry about that however from that research if you decide to publish it as a book if you dis- decide to make some royalty and from the numerous insta reels you start earning ad revenues then it breaches fair use okay so interestingly friends many of these songs that are played on insta reels i'm a little worried because many of them are copyrighted still suppose you're using mukesh song or uh, mohammad rafi's song or lata mangeshkar song they were not under the current copyright so probably you can probably use them without uh, uh, you know thinking of violation of the copyright law so i believe friends the ethical dimension over here is very critical that look you must acknowledge who or from where you are taking the source it's very clear i think that's what basic ethic means but at the same time remember there is something called copyright societies to whom you know even fm radios when they play these uh, new songs they have to actually give royalty they have to give it to the copyright society and from the copyright society it is given to the producers so i think it's very important that we understand the dimension about how we put anything on the media especially digital media because digital media can immediately catch attention there is immediate uh, something you can retrieve and you can know whether there is a violation in the first place or not so there are certain duties that you must have quickly let me tell you this if at any point of time anybody reports that you know you have uh, used a copyrighted material uh, please remember your first duty is to bring that post down immediately you must remove that uh, content immediately you can then dispute it then prove it and then you can repost it but if you do not do it for every kind of a violation please note including uh, copyright infringement it could be defamation it could be violation of privacy it could be uh, you know uh, inciting uh, communal hatredness hurting religious sentiments it could be fake news false reporting it could be anything Uh, that uh, is covered under law for all of that you will continue to be under violation so i think digital media has a lot of strength it has a lot of reach but at the same time it must have the same levels of responsibility any delay uh, will actually result in uh, uh, serious consequences so i think uh, there is so much material online i think we must know what to pick when to acknowledge and how to use and very important difference you cannot have shortcut method to original content friends we cannot be anomalic the anomalic at one point of time always looked at inspiration from the western music right whether it was inspiration or whether it was copyright but it's important that the ethic would mean that you rely so much on your original content you rely to create that original content as far as possible and that is where uh, looking at my uh, watch and uh, of course uh, i'm sure pranav can address a little bit more on the same topic and he can also look at uh, addressing the question so thank you very much it's over to anto